Hello and welcome to VEX Robotics for Competition, a tutorial for new teams, presented by McCallum Robotics of Austin, Texas, Team 8756. Program Selection. So you should be at a point where you have something like four autonomous programs, one for each starting position. So the question arises, how do you pick them when it's time to go to the uh, competition field and play? The most standard method would be to just comment out the ones you don't want to use and then re-download the program, which is fine. So if I wanted to switch from program one to program two, I just uh, do my commenting on one and then uncomment another and re-download and, and now I'm gonna run program two. And that's fine, uh, it does work great, except for if you get to the field and the other team only has a program for the starting position you were gonna use and now you're stuck with a program that doesn't apply to where you need to start. So there's a couple other ways to do that. Um, the one we'll look at is using jumpers. A jumper clip is a very simple item that acts as a pressed button when placed into a digital sensor input. Since the jumper acts like a button, I can test for it with a C control structure like an if statement. So I've uncommented all my programs and I can just put an if statement testing for a particular port and then run uh, that program. So it would be if sensor value TGTL for digital and let's say I want to do port 8 for this program is equal to 1. So now if I have a a jumper in digital 8, then it will run this program. I'll need to follow that same method for all the other programs with else ifs. So I have else if digital 10 for my next program, and I'm giving myself a comment so I know which one it does. And then else if digital 12, and then for the fourth one, this is sort of my default program, I want to just have nothing and just have an else. That way if I have no jumper in or I've placed the jumper in the wrong input, it will do something. So this would be a good one, a place to have your most standard program. And that's it. Now uh, all I need to do is put a jumper into the digital port that I want and it will run that program. If I get to the field and I need to switch it, I just need to carefully move it to the correct port. So here I have the jumper in, in input 8, which means it's running program 1. If I want to switch it to program 2, I just move it over to input 10, and away we go. The fancy method for program selection would be to use an LCD screen. And there is a subtle hint on screen now about purchasing. To use the LCD screen, you'll need to write some fairly complicated code uh, using case structures. Fortunately, Robot C has a bunch of sample programs. There's a folder with LCD programs and there's a code user program. The elements in this program need to be put into three different places within your competition template in order to work. That's all spelled out in the, in the comments, but uh, let me show you the process. There's some constants that you'll want to put in the globals area. So we want to have this uh, count variable at set as a global and we want the voids also as globals in our uh, competition template. So I'm going to copy all these guys and I will put them up in my global area. So I'm pasting these into my competition template in the globals area. And I'm going to give them a header so that I know that these are for the LCD screen. And then these functions are for the LCD screen as well, so I'll give that a header. So they're LCD functions. Now I know what they're for and I'm not going to mess with them anymore. Going back to Code Chooser, 
in, they have everything in a task main, but that won't work in the competition template. So this beginning of user interface code, the part that says user interface code, that goes into your pre-autonomous so that you can make button presses during that time during the competition. So all of this gets copied down to where it says end of user interface code into pre-autonomous. Pre-autonomous. So I have my gyro uh, clearing there right now. I'm going to add all that code. And I'm going to give it a header so that I know what it looks like or know what it's referring to. Let me copy this. Alright, so this is one case structure, and this is a case structure using count as the variable to switch between cases, and then you'll do another case structure using the exact same variable. So whenever you're pressing the buttons, you're really setting two different case structures. So this part where it says beginning of robot movement code, this goes into the autonomous section. So I copy it, put it into my autonomous section. Inside the default cho code chooser, there's a, just a little bit of code for an actual autonomous program, and it's right here. If you look carefully at how this works, there's a switch and there's cases. Each case is going to be one of your programs. It starts with a few lines of code that will put text onto the LCD screen, and then it has the, another little bit of code that is the actual autonomous program. So we're going to want to put our first program right here, it, where it says case and case zero, right before the break, that's where we put our first program. So I'm going to cut and paste my first program there. And then I can rename, the, replace the text that shows when it's running. So I can say 1 and it's auto arm height. This can only be 16 characters long. So I, if I count it out, I really probably have too many. So I'm just going to say arm height. And then I'll know which one's running. If I do that for the remainder, that would be replacing this bit of text with my actual program. And then renaming, I'll have the autonomous part set up. I have moved each bit of my autonomous programming into the cases within the chick code chooser. Uh, you'll see that I've also renamed them, and then where they have all the cases, there's a default at the end. So if there wasn't a program selected, if there was some failure, uh, it would it would have something to do, which is its default. You could put code there if you wanted to for a fifth program or a default program of some other sort. Now I need to go up into the pre-autonomous case structure, because that's where I'm actually making the choices during pre-autonomous. And so I'll want to change the text for case 0 to be my first program's text. So it could just copy over exactly what you did. In my case, it was uh, arm height. And I'll need to do that for each of the cases. There's a name to change in each one. And if I do that, I have my program selected in each one. And when I can press the button, and while I'm pressing the button, I'll, I'll know which one I'm choosing. So you just press right and left buttons to, to scroll through your options and press the middle button to select the option. Important note is the, the first case, case 0, has a count that goes to the last one. So however many you have, if you added one, you would change this to 4. If you subtracted one and only had 3 programs, you would change this to 2. So this is where you, you get it to cycle to the last one. All the other ones in the middle 
have a count plus plus, which means add one to the count, and it'll go to the next one. The very last one, however many you have, it needs to have here a count zero to cycle to the first option. So that's it. You just need to move the three parts of the code chooser into the correct parts of your competition template. Some go into the global area, some goes into the pre-autonomous area, and some goes into the autonomous area, and then it'll work fine. There's another nice sample program within the LCD folder called Display Battery Voltage. And there's code describing what it does. It'll, it'll basically put the voltage of your main battery and your backup battery into the LCD screen. And I have adapted that in my user control area at the bottom, after all my actual controller controls. I have another section now called LCD control, and I put, I didn't really care to have the backup battery, so I just commented it. And I have a, used that text so that I have driver control on the top of the line, and then my primary battery voltage on the second line. And I also turn the backlight on. So this means that during driver control, the LCD screen will be brightly lit. And if you put the screen on during driver control and on during pre-autonomous and off during autonomous, you can kind of see when it switches over to driver control while you're playing. And it's just really nice to have your battery voltage so you can, you can tell whenever you're driving around if you have enough power if you need to replace your battery. So I failed to mention you do plug the LCD into the UART2 port. The Y wire that has a white cable on it goes in the TX on the LCD and the one that has a yellow goes into the RX. Uh, I'm going to uh, I've downloaded the program and I'm going to set it on autonomous so we can see what it does. It may be hard to read on the video, but we'll see how it goes. So it's saying uh, arm height is my first program. If I go left, it switches to turn gyro because that's the last one. Right button shows all the different options. I'm going to be sure to do arm height so I don't drive off the table here. I press enter, and it runs it. And then when the uh, user control starts, It switches to driver control, turns on the light, and tells me my battery voltage. Thank you for watching.